Good morning, children. I hope you're all staying safe and keeping busy. I have decided that I'm going to do a little bit of reading for you. And I've got three books. Well, I've got three books. I'm going to read all three, but in like a bit of a series. So today I'm going to read, they're all by, sorry, they're all by Rachel Bright and Jim Field. And today I'm going to read The Koala Who Could. And then maybe tomorrow, maybe in a few days, The Squirrels Who Squabbled. And then, The Lion Inside, they're all rhyming books, they've all got a bit of a moral, so they've all got a bit of, the, the, the books sort of teach you something, um, and my little boy absolutely loves them. So, here goes, The Koala Who Could. In a wonderful place, at the breaking of dawn, where the breezes were soft, and the sunshine was warm. A place where the creatures ran wild and played free. A koala called Kevin clung to a tree. A nicer grey fellow you never would meet. As soft as a softing from ear tufts to feet. His favourite way to relax in the sun was to cling and to nap and to munch a leaf bun. He was terribly good all these three things. Yes, Kevin was king of the staying still kings. He didn't like to move very much, did Kevin. You see, high up was safe since he liked the slow pace, while the ground down below seemed a frightening place. Too fast and too loud and too big and too strange. Nope, Kevin preferred not to move, nor to change. So he clung to his tree and he knew how to do, as he knew how to do, and was never too keen to try anything new. So when Wombat stopped by and shouted one day, Hey Kevin, why don't you come down here and play? Um, um, I think, he replied, I shall stay on my plant. I'm busy right now. No, I'm sorry, I can't. He was very reluctant to move. Why not, cried the ruse, who liked the idea. Yes, why, called the dingoes. You've nothing to fear. But Kevin, who wasn't the do-things-quick sort, said, I've clinging to do, but thanks for the thought. There he is, up there, looking very nervous. As Kevin sat watching them chatter and share. A part of him wished he could join in down there. But he knew he'd miss home in the dark and the late. The whole thing was risky. Adventure could wait. Whatever the invite, he'd always say no. Oh dear, it seemed Kevin just couldn't let go. So he's missing out, he's missing out on the things that are going on down, down below. But he just can't let go of his trees, just a little bit fearful. So his life was the same, no matter the day. The weeks came and went, and the months rolled away. And Kevin stayed still while the world moved around. Until he awoke to a worrying sound. <gasps> what do you think it's going to be? No. Tap, tap, the sound went. Well, this was a blow. Tap, tap, tappity, tap, 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 tap. Oh no! Uncling, the crowd called, that had gathered below. Leap and we'll catch you. Just let yourself go. But Kevin was scared. Let go? No, I shan't. I won't, clung Kevin. Oh dear, I just... Can't! Oof. Down came the tree with a crackling and a pinging, crash and a wallop, with Kevin still clinging. So, the little bird has tapped away and the tree has fallen down, but Kevin's still clinging to his tree. Kevin, he carefully opened one eye and looked up at the love staring down from the sky. And one claw by one claw, he slowly unclung. He felt springy and light 
and happy and young. The worst he could think of had now come to pass and he was just fine. Well, he felt quite first class. So when Wombat held, out, Wombat held out a most welcoming paw, Kevin, he didn't hold back anymore. When Dingo asked, now, will you come out and play? The crowd all joined in with her, what do you say? And even though this wasn't part of his plan, Kevin replied, yes, I think, I think I can. And Kevin from then on was always can do. Because life can be great when you try something new. I love that story because the moral of the story is sometimes things seem a little bit scary at first, but then when we kind of get a little bit of a push to do something, actually, what did Kevin say at the end? He loved trying new things. So even though the new things seemed a little bit worrying and a little bit scary, when he was kind of forced into it, he absolutely loved it and life changed for the better. So this story's little message, little moral is, have a bit of a can-do attitude. And even though something seems a little bit scary at first, if you give it a go, your life might change for the better. Thanks for listening, kids. See you later.